Tower TV, yeah, we talking about the dream team. No Fox News, cause we giving it to you clean. Catch us in the halls to make it on the big screen. Not talking about the Spartans when we bringing out the big green. You know we always on the grind, never hit the snooze. Not talking about La Fala, cause you know we never lose. Just waiting on our Emmy, never fail to amuse. And we're running away with it, just call us Rachel Hughes. Smile with the beat, man, peeper and the stamina. Davin Mars making magic with his steady camera. Spreading through the school, you would think that we are cancerous. But every time we popping out, you know we looking glamorous. Pulling up to school in our foreign horsepower. You know we always saucy, make it wet like a shower. We putting in that work for the whole sixth hour. Now we coming to you live from the east side tower let's get it it's been a minute east high what's up i'm rachel and i'm bailey and we've got a chock full episode for you so sit back relax get off your phone and watch what we've been working on for you knowing that no one would judge me oh man that's hard, because I do very little in my life worrying about how people are going to judge it. Mm. Man, this is hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can take your time, though. Um, well... Probably, like, put, like, seven pieces of bubblegum in my mouth and just chew them. Uh, the pink kind, the really hard kind. Just kind of like, just kind of get all over your mouth. Um, I wouldn't change anything because I really love who I am. Hit it. Uh, need it. Uh, get Hit it. it. Uh, 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 uh. And this who created me today. And yeah, I wouldn't change anything. I'm fine now. Cooper Squad. Um, I would probably raise my hand more because sometimes I'm scared that I'm going to get the wrong <laughs> answer. So I don't raise my hand. <laughs> Probably the food I eat, like staying more healthy, stuff like that. I eat more vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. Go to parties. <laughs> Go to hella parties, because I haven't done that yet. What would I do differently? Probably nothing, because I don't necessarily care about how people judge me and what people think all that much anyway. Um, I don't think I'd change anything. I don't, I don't think... I, I, Sorry. <laughs> Good luck, guys. <laughs> uh, what do you think about that answer, Ms. Paulson? It seems familiar. It does seem a little familiar. People can like me or not like me. I just do it. Um, well, I guess I'd, I'd bring my goats to school and just like have a good time with that because I feel like they'd make everybody's day better and that'd be fun. I'd probably go live on the side of a mountain in a hammock with a couple of huskies. Just grow my hair as long as I wanted it to be. Just grow like a full beard that went to the ground. Not, not, just not do anything for anyone else. Just like spend all my time in my hammock, just like reading, just like chilling. Yeah. Well, at first, I would tell the person I like that I like them. <laughs> <laughs> Just beep out the name. Well, the second thing, um, I like take a stand for pretty much everything in this school, cause I feel like some people like to shy away from a lot of topics, and if I didn't like focus on that, then you know, I'd make change. I don't know. I'd just talk <laughs> more. <laughs> We, we would go bald. <laughs> okay, 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 we done. Oh my goodness. I'm good though. Wow, that was really insightful. Speaking of one question, have you seen the new student art in the gallery? No, I haven't. Here's Poppy with the story. The first semester art show is now up in the Ray Edwards Gallery. This show presents student pieces from East's many art classes. I love ceramic. Well, I've taken it since freshman year and I love how it's like a little almost meditation out of my day. It's really relaxing and it's a really cool way to express myself. I went into uh, high school with like, I didn't really, I just like drawing, um, but ceramics is super duper fun. Right now I'm doing a painting of a girl holding a goat and I'm liking it. 
Yep. Uh, this semester I actually made a colander, which I'm really proud of. I'd never tried that before, and it was one of our required projects, and I'm really proud of how it turned out. The pieces that I absolutely love are my cups, because in freshman year, I would notice how like derpy they look, and as I would keep creating them, they improved so much that I'm just like, oh my god, like anyone can do this, they just need practice. It's almost done. It is a, a dragon eye pendant. It has a glass cabochon that I lacquered the back of, and then I built up uh, textured metal around it using a combination of soldering and riveting. I think it's really important to take art classes in a high school setting just because it's a step away from either math or science or any other required class and it's a nice break out of your day and like I already said it's kind of like a meditation. Just playing and creating sculptures that inspired me like I never knew I could ever create something like that. I am actually I love math a lot. Uh, I like to do like calc and um, everything and I'm really interested in STEM but I think definitely having art as part of um, my uh, schooling has really given me like a unique perspective. Well I guess that this is a pretty information based society so visual literacy I guess is really important for future careers and just to develop interest. Don't forget to stop by the Ray Edwards Gallery to see some of the incredible art made here at East. Signing off for Tower TV, this is Poppy. Man, I wish I was that cool to art stuff. Me too. Next up are the announcements. The American Sign Language Club meets on Tuesdays during lunch in room 2010. New members are always welcome. Avid Tops Club meets on Fridays at lunch in room 3009. All students interested in community service and fundraising are welcome. Pergolder Unify will be taking the Polar Plunge on February 17, 2018. Any students or staff interested in participating in this cause is welcome to join. 25% of the funds raised will go towards Poor Gold or Unify. Please see Ms. Schaefer in room 2041 for more information. Beginning on January 22nd, the No Pass List will be run weekly. Any student who has six tardies or more in a week will go on the No Pass List. Also, any students on the Habitual Truancy List will be on the No Pass List. You will be removed from the No Pass List if you have five consecutive days of perfect attendance. If you're on the no pass list, you will not be admitted into any extracurricular school-based events. See Mr. Amara in Office 1040G for more information. The next blood drive will be held on February 28th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. You will earn an hour of community service for your donation and save up to three lives. Sign-up sheets will be outside of room 135 beginning February 19th. If you are age 16, you will also need to complete the parent permission form. See Ms. Winger for more information. Seniors who plan to participate in the graduation ceremony are reminded that caps, gowns, tassels, and stoles are required for all students. Order your items through Midwest Scholastics as soon as possible as the price will increase in February. If you need to borrow items, please see someone in Student Services. Students who want to receive the Service E Award must submit their volunteer hours online. The link to the online form is on the East website under Service Hours. All hours must be submitted by the end of February. Stop by the main office if you have any questions. This year's prom will be held downtown at the Masonic Temple on Saturday, April 28th, starting at 8 p.m. All juniors and seniors are welcome. Tickets will go on sale in April. Show choir and concert choir auditions for next school year take place on Wednesday, January 24th after school. The audition consists of an individual vocal session and a group dance audition. Sign-ups are outside the choir room. Anybody can audition. Please see Mr. H.S. if you have a conflict that night. Singing Valentine's will be taking place on Wednesday, February 14th. Buy a song to embarrass your friends while supporting the East High Choir Department. Singing Valentine's costs $5 and will be sold around school starting a week before Valentine's Day. All spring athletes need to complete the athletic permissions online again for their spring sport and stop by the athletic office to review blue card requirements. A new club is being started at East called NAMI Raise Your Voice Club. The club is a joint project between Mr. Kempman and several UW students. It will work to educate and fight the stigma of mental health issues around East and in the community. Starting second semester, there are plans to meet on Thursdays either during lunch or after school. See Mr. Kempman in room 1062 for more information. Very informative. 
Remember the AP survey we took a while back? Nope. Well, the wait is over and the results are in. Take it away, Mohammed. Hi, my name is Mohammed and I'm a senior here at East. In November, we were all asked to take a student survey about advanced placement at East. Well, the results of that survey are in, and it's time for East students to step up and consider how pushing themselves in AP classes will help them in the future. The results of that survey showed that there are literally hundreds of students in the building right now who should be in AP classes, but aren't. From someone who has pushed himself to take several AP classes, my advice is to have faith in your intellectual abilities and accept the challenge of an AP class. Don't let the fear of failure keep you away. AP classes are the best way to prepare yourself for the rigor of college courses. You are learning a skill set and mentality of how to be successful. Just because an AP class is hard does not mean it is impossible. Set goals for yourself, manage your time well, and make good use of your resources. If you follow this advice, you might be surprised by the things you can accomplish not just in an AP class, but also your everyday life. In January, you meet with your counselors to schedule your next year's classes. Look hard at all East AP classes and find one that works for you. Contact your counselor or one of the teachers you know and trust to learn more about your AP options. Thank you, and I hope to see more of you taking AP classes next year. Thanks, Mohammed. Next up is an announcement about Human Rights Week. Hi, we're student organizers for Human Rights Week at East High School. I'm Sheehan. I'm Atticus. And I'm Maggie. In February, East will be holding its ninth annual Human Rights Week. This is a week-long series of presentations on local and international human rights issues. Attending this year's Human Rights Week, we have a range of presenters from politicians, professors, and authors, as well as activists within our own community. They will be speaking on topics such as Buddhists' perspective on human rights, micro-militarization, the Cambodian genocide, and police racialization of our own community as well as communities around the United States. Human Rights Week will be from February 5th through February 8th. Uh, we will be offering talks almost every hour in the new Margaret Williams Theater. Uh, you can ask your teacher, please encourage your teacher to sign up for talks. They will be getting a brochure that will tell them every period that we're offering talks and what the presentation topic is on. Um, we encourage kids, if they can get passes, to also come down and check out uh, what's going on. You don't need any background knowledge to come and participate, and we hope to see you all there. Thanks, guys. You know Us, right? Yeah, who doesn't? Here's Justin and Devin with a story on East's very own Usman Jabang. One of the most exciting atmospheres in the Big Eight. East pools are just waiting on a legacy to be born. Built on pride, passion, determination, and hope. Hope that one swimmer can make a big enough splash to take these east side swimmers to the next level. With only one win in the past few years, there is question who will step up for these young pergolders. But there is a new glimmer of hope on the horizon. A glimmer of hope that stands six feet one inches tall, weighing in at 250 pounds. Usman. He has been swimming competitively for three years, but has had a passion for swim his entire life. You know what, um, I would have to say, you know, I like swimming recreational because I can do my own thing. I'm not timed, I'm not going against other people, you know, who might be faster. There's a little chance that might happen, but if that chance is there, I don't want to do that. You know, I just want to be out there, be free, be the fish I know I am. All right. Usman not only has a passion for swim, he also has a strong connection with his team. My favorite part about swimming, Besides the pool, would have to be my teammates, the fun we have, everything we do, the pasta parties, the, you know, everything, you know. I, as you may or may not know, I have a speaker. And after practice, we go in that shower, we turn off the lights, and we throw bangles, bro. I kid you not. Ask anyone about it. You walk in, you get lit. Usman let us know why swimming the fly is better than any other stroke. The reason why is the first stroke I've ever learned to do. It's a stroke I grew up with personally. I've always seen it done professionally, non-professionally. I butterfly, when you think of that, you think of a butterfly. Majestically going through the fields of like a, a Danish farm of sausages. Usman even talked to us about his greatest accomplishment. The fall is our, our greatest accomplishment. We beat them mercifulness, bro. Like, I feel like I was in Game of Thrones, bro, season two. Bro, I was counting them, I, bro. 
I swear to you, it was. It felt so good to uh, beat La Follette after all these years of all this big talk. And as you know, hells have went down that day. We leave you with some of Usman's best advice to living a very happy life. Signing off for Tower TV, this is Justin and Devin. You want to cope with your problems the best you can. For me, I've found my coping, and that is... Swim. Also have to throw great bangles, if I can add. Thanks, Devin and Justin. Now to Nico and company for some deets on Green Team and how you can get involved. Hello there. My name is Hayden Cohen, and I'm the president of Green Team. It's a new club, and we want you to help us to solve environmental issues around the school or near our community. You can catch us at room 3031 or Miss Wilcox room or the Apes room if that's better for you. Come, it's super fun. We get to look at plants all day, so. Um, well, we're actually looking for project opportunities, so if people can bring ideas to us, you don't even have to join the club, but if you're like, this is an area in East I could really see improved um, in an environmental aspect, that'd be cool. We're hoping to have some movie nights in the coming future, so look for that. We'll be in the new theater, hopefully maybe showing some documentaries and then some more fun movies. Um, but yeah, that's what we have going on. Speaking of environments, here's a story on ours. Oscar's got the facts. Having 1,700 high school students all eating lunch in a 50-minute time period can often leave a considerable mess, which has been made worse in recent months by cooler temperatures. Yeah, I think you just get more people staying in the building. I think that they uh, don't, you know, I think in the nicer seasons, people leave uh, the building more. So I think with more people, there's, there's more trash and more mess. Mr. Hernandez is concerned about the image that the mess sends about East High School. What image does it send? It sends that we don't care. It sends, I mean, there are some negative images that are portrayed towards East High School by um, some members of our community or other schools, and it reinforces those. We know they're not true, um, uh, but we need to, to treat this castle as if it is a castle. Another concern is that leaving a mess sets a bad example for other students. It's that broken window syndrome. You know, you see, you see somebody throwing some napkins or some nachos or whatnot on the ground. It doesn't mean as much if you do it because somebody else did it helping pick things up here and there, it just, it, it displays good character and I think uh, positive uh, behavior just you know, inspires other positive behavior. Unfortunately, the littering isn't confined to the building itself and has spread outside into surrounding areas. I'm most concerned about the rise of trash that are getting put in our neighbor's yards. The image isn't great and then we have to try to figure out how to repair those relationships with our community. It's important to remember that just because other people are responsible for cleaning doesn't mean it's okay to leave a mess. I hope that you're not the type of person that as they are finishing their, their hamburger, they just throw it on the ground in a restaurant or they throw it out their window when they're driving. East is a unique building that has been used by hundreds of thousands of people over the past hundred years, so please show your respect by cleaning up after yourself. There's a lot of trash laying around. Granted, we have 2,000 people walking through this building, but that means that we have 2,000 people that can help take care of this building. Signing off for Tower TV, this is Oscar Anderson. That was honestly trash, but you know what is it? The new cafeteria food. Here's Maya, Liam, and Eamon with a story. Everyone knows that cafeteria food can't be a homemade meal. The food is often less fresh than it could be, and not very healthy either. But what if that wasn't the case? Two professional chefs are here at East to help our cafeteria staff bring delicious and fresh meals to the school. My name is Charlotte Lichens. My name is Colleen Monahan, and I work for Sustainable Kitchens. And I work for Sustainable Kitchens. Charlotte walked us through cooking one of the samples and gave us a first-hand look at the fresh ingredients. And so for green salsa, we start with tomatillos. They're like a little green tomato. And I'm putting them in the food processor. I'm gonna add a cup of lime juice. 
about two cups of jalapenos and green chili peppers. So we have the pulled pork quesadilla with cheddar, green salsa, and melon with tahini seasoning on it. And that's the sample. We talked to Charlotte and Colleen for some more information about the program. So this project was started by a guy um, named Steve who is your school food service director for the whole district. It was his idea to make the food, um, to try out some scratch cooked chef prepared meals for the different high schools. We also asked about the future of the program and found out when these meals will be added to the regular menu. So in the uh, next month, at the end of February, you'll be able to purchase the meal with your meal account, um, like anything else you would, would eat in the cafeteria. And then next fall, it'll be on the menu every day. So it'll just be one of the regular windows that you can eat from. Colleen told us about her favorite meal so far. I love our oven fried chicken biscuit. Uh, we take a chicken tender and then we bread it with uh, rice check, checks actually, so it's gluten free. Um, and then we put it on a homemade biscuit with spicy mayo and pickles. Shout out to the cafeteria staff for their dedication and hard work. Don't forget to thank them. They work really hard at what they do. Signing off for Tower TV, this is Liam and Maya. Sounds delish. I'm glad they're updating the menu. Last but not least, here's Poppy with the scoop on the job fair we had a few weeks ago. I'm Milo, I'm in 11th grade, and you're watching Disney Channel. Last month, we had a couple big events here at East. Let's take a look back at what students saw at the college and career fair. It gives students an opportunity to have hands-on experience with an array of different career options. Um, and so they come down and they have been prompted with sort of career exploration questions they can ask our presenters. Um, yeah, and they can just do some exploration. It's nice to see the job options you have here. I like how I can like learn about different careers and see what I want to do. I like learning about the new careers, especially ones that I didn't really know about before that ended up being really interesting. Uh, I love the pizza cutters, you know, I like to be nutritious, you know, all that value, the supplements, the vitamins, so. They don't really know all of the individual careers that really are available for them and the different avenues to get there. So it's beneficial in the sense that this allows them to see careers that they never even knew existed. They never even thought were a possibility and to talk one-on-one -on -one with someone who actually does that every day. Uh, I want to see what colleges I can go to and what kind of programs that will take me the career I want. Yeah. I learned about the WNLA, which is about like agriculture and installing like irrigation systems and it's actually kind of cool because it has to do with like art and math as well. College is important. Stay in school, get your education, put in work, get those grades. Pathway students also had the opportunity to present their proposals for solving food insecurity to members of the community. We looked at the overweight and obesity rates in Madison and we crafted multiple solutions to see which the best one would be. And the solution we found, what their main solution was requiring all vendors at farmers markets to accept double dollars. Uh, so pretty much our solution to uh, food insecurity is uh, making more grocery stores in low-income areas to uh, boost uh, the people that the amount of food that people are getting and the good food they're getting. For nutrition in Wisconsin is a big issue. Um, we evaluated many solutions and we decided on community gardens. We proposed a solution that includes uh, public schools, include a health class that teaches about the knowledge and awareness and teaches about nutritional values in food, and they add it to their curriculum. Um, we thought this was the best solution because we'll be using the public schools as an outlet for this information, and we'll be also teaching the future generation. And this has real-world applications for students who want to make a difference in sustainable health care, in food, and it's a really good way for them to learn how, actually how to present interviews and how to try to apply for jobs and resumes and to get wow. into college. Wow, keep up the good work, East High. Signing off for Tower TV, this is Poppy. 
Thanks for tuning in to this week's Tower TV, and I hope you all snapped on your finals. See you next time. Thank you.